Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this series, I am just thinking uh, about uh, sharing some of the important points which you should bear in your mind while you do the decision. And we will be just brushing through the important points uh, in the decision hall. And we will start with the series with the pectoral region first. So in the pectoral region, first of all, you should know there are mainly four parts for the upper lip. The shoulder region, then you have the arm or brachium, then you have the forearm or antebrachium and the hand. These are the four main regions. Now when you think about the shoulder, it's not that shoulder which you studied till the plus two days. When we say shoulder, it includes mainly the shoulder joint, then you have the axilla or armpit, uh, then you have at the back the scapula region which actually uh, includes the region around the scapula and anteriorly you have the pectoral or breast region. So these are the main four regions which come under the shoulder. Now when you think about the upper limb it is connected to the thorax through only one joint that is very very important though you have many muscles attaching the upper limb to the thorax there is only one joint attaching the whole upper limb to the thorax so that joint is known as sternoclavicular joint because the clavicle and scapula goes along with the free upper limb isn't it so it is through the clavicle the free upper limb is connected to the thorax at the sternoclavicular joint that point also you have to remember now uh, we will move on to the pectoral region so uh, what do you mean by the pectoral region? Pectoral region actually includes the muscles covering the chest and uh, actually in front of the chest and these muscles will be holding the free upper limb to the thorax and of course it includes also the vessels and nerves which are supplying these muscles. So all together that is the muscles in front of the chest which holds the upper limb to the thorax along with its nerves and vessels that is what you call as pectoral region. Now uh, between this free upper limb and the thorax the hollow pit which you get that is known as the axilla. Now axilla we will discuss in another session for the time being we will focus on the pectoral region. So when you focus on the pectoral region, uh, when you discuss about the surface anatomy, the important landmarks, you need to know some of the important landmarks. The first one is the clavicle. So the clavicle is one of the bones which you can palpate throughout its entire length. That is very very important because most of the bones will be covered with muscles and uh, you will be able to appreciate only some part of the bone when you palpate. But the exception for the clavicle is from medial to lateral end, you can feel for the clavicle throughout its length. That is very, very important. Now, there is another point known as jugular notch. These are important landmarks in the pectoral region. Okay, so jugular notch is nothing but there is a notch between the two ends, two medial ends of the clavicle. That is known as jugular notch and that is just above the manubrium sternum because the sternum has got three parts. The upper part you call it as manubrium, the middle part you call it as body and the lower part you call it as siphoid process. So above the upper part, between the two medial heads of clavicle, there is a notch that is known as jugular notch. Now the next one, the very important point is the sternal angle. So what do you mean by the sternal angle? You can go and read in detail about the sternal angle, the events occurring at the sternal angle or sometimes I will be doing a session on it. For the time being, how will you identify the sternal angle? When you trace your finger from the jugular notch down along the sternum, at one point you will feel a slight elevation, a very slight elevation and that region is actually known as the sternal angle and it is nothing but the junction of the manubrium with the body of sternum. And when you look at the lateral aspect of the sternal angle, it is the second cartilage, the second cartilage of the second rib, which is articulating at the sternal angle. So that also is very, very important. Why? Because if you know the second rib cartilage, now it is easy for you to count the ribs below uh, when you discuss some important landmark over the pectoral region. So that's again very important point. Now the next landmark is the epigastric fossa. So we have the manubrium, we have the body of sternum and we have the siphoid process. So above or uh, over the siphoid process there is a depression. Uh, or when we look over the anterior aspect, 
just over the cephoid versus there is a depression and that is known as epigastric fossa so which is the rib corresponding to this region it is the seventh rib so these important landmarks you should always remember now coming to the nipple uh, we know the position of the nipple usually varies because uh, in women we have a more developed breast and that is the reason why the position of the nipple also varies uh, so normally speaking the position of the nipple we say it is in the fourth intercostal space but just by knowing the fourth intercostal space you cannot locate the nipple why because it can uh, extend from medial to lateral aspect isn't it so for that you have to draw a line a line passing through the middle of the clavicle you call it as mid clavicular line and you mark a point medial to the mid clavicular line in the fourth intercostal space that is the normal position where you expect the pos uh, for the position of the nipple now the next important landmark is the infraclavicular fossa so what do you mean by infraclavicular fossa so from the term itself infra means below then the clavicle so below the clavicle you call it as infraclavicular fossa so for that you have to identify a point on the clavicle that is the junction between the lateral one third and the middle one third if you mark a point the region just below that point there is a depression and that is known as the infraclavicular fossa so once you know the infraclavicular fossa there are two muscles lying medially and laterally so let's see which are the muscles lying medially and laterally in the next session thank you thanks for watching